running fine. I welcome you to the very first uh, stream of the CWVI West Coast sessions. So for those of you who uh, have wondered what the last four weeks happened and why there were no streams, etc. I was a little bit off the grid as I was moving to the US West Coast. So you are now greeted from sunny California. Hi. And uh, I'm very excited today to um, talk about or look into a brand new library by Eduardo Tarilonti released by Best Service which is Celtic Era. Uh, if you're familiar with Eduardo's Era series, like uh, Era uh, Medieval uh, Era and uh, Persia, Ancient Persia, uh, you know what kind of to expect from this kind of library. And uh, I just got it two days ago, and it's really a first hands-on that I'm doing today, so I haven't played with it really much uh just some short look into some of the patches to just know what we are going through today and so let's straight dive in and check it out together and see what this is all about first give me some coffee and i got a new audio interface um and did some adjustments to the way the audio stream is handled in the stream so if you have any issues if it's too soft or uh, my mic is too too low in volume or whatever um, just give me a note in the chat and I try to adjust accordingly so there we go it's running in best service own engine or um, no, not best service, this is Magix, I think. Um, so in its own player. And Celtic Era comes with a bunch of different um, instrument categories. Ancient, keyed instruments, percussion, soundscapes, strings, which is both boat and plucked and wind instruments. So why not just dive straight in, let's say, check out the Irish flute, for example. So in case you're wondering uh, what is happening with the audio, um, besides my uh, voiceover channel here, you can ignore that. Um, I did some a dip of 10 dB on the instrument channel because it's insanely loud uh, like Omnisphere and a lot of other libraries that get released it's just extremely loud so minus 10 dB on the channel and I just got a limiter on the master bus to um, prevent some over-the-top peaks and things like that so and there we go here we have the interface uh, as I said it's running in best service engine and this is the Irish flute. So that was played straight out of the box with uh, nothing uh, going on in terms of key switching, etc. That's the plain sound. Uh, that's a bunch of reverb as often with Eduardo's libraries. So when you drop that off, right. so turn it down. So usually his libraries are pretty dry um, and with the typical um, reverb from engine uh, you get these wide soundscapes uh, with that endless tail on there but you can turn it off if you want to which is great. Um, 
then down here in the uh, bottom end, uh, bottom row of keys, uh, you can see here the articulation that is selected. So when you hit a different key switch down here, you get uh, accordingly another articulation like a fast slide, slow slide, that's indeed slow, uh, cuts. And as soon as you release a key switch, it gets back to the legato mode, which is pretty straightforward and convenient. So when you start a phrase with a short roll, for example, So that works pretty great. And last but not least, over here we have um, triple tonguing. And then the red seems like the short notes, like staccato. Long staccato, which sounds more like a marcato already. And overblown effects. So that's the Irish flute. And what else do we have? We have the low whistle in D. It seems that the vibrato is baked in and you have... Uh, so what we are right now do doesn't do anything. And you can, well, you can control the volume with the expression, CC11. That's a nice sound there. Let's try some of the articulations and ornamentations. It seems uh, this kind, uh, uh, this type of flute has only one legato transition. So, for example, when I remember in uh, in uh, ancient Persia, for example, the duduk, there were six different legato articulations depending on uh, mod wheel status and how soft or hard you play the notes. So, soft or hard playing doesn't do a difference here. So, it seems to me. Correct me if I'm wrong, sorry for that, uh, that it's just one legato articulation, but this one legato articulation works really great, as far as I can tell now. players do some Middle East stuff. <laughs> uh, pipes is the other category in the wind instruments. So besides the flutes we have some <coughs> and funnily enough this one does not react to expression so you have no choice of controlling the volume besides the volume knob. No, it doesn't react to expression, which is kind of a little bit of sad, uh, but 
I guess that might be fixed anytime soon in a future update. Okay, the drone keeps playing as long till you uh, re-trigger the note. Which is kind of cool, so you don't need to hold it down all the way. So, yeah, that's the Highland Pipes. What else do we have? We got the Julian Pipes. Let's check these out. And here expression works again. So I'm really assuming that for the Highland Pipes is just a bug and uh, it's going to be fixed in the next version. So again, we have these uh, different key switch articulations. So, Julian pipes, and um, what else we have? Uh, drones and regulators. Okay, these are just the drones as we had them in the same instrument within the Highland Pipes. Um, so working our way through, let's take a look at uh, keyed instruments we have here. What is this? So, and as usual with uh, Eduardo's libraries, you can kind of adjust the noise volume. So that's a little bit more. Let's see the info on this instrument, uh, concertina, uh, free read music instrument like, uh, so accordion like pretty much. <laughs> so that's a nice sound there and I think it's just, an, uh, the second one is just an alternate version. <laughs> It seems like the noise you make when you just press it together and the air escapes. Which kind of adds to the realism. And let's go on. What else do we have? We have percussion, which is, as it's Celtic library, the Bodron. I hope that I pronounced that correctly.
with a bunch of different MIDI files that are spread out across these blue and green keys down here. And when you go for 100. So it's MIDI files, so there's no time stretching artifacts or whatever. And of course you can play it yourself. Okay, these red keys are rolls. So that's nice. Uh, so that was bottom bass stick. Next instrumental line is high stick. Okay, that's not as mid stick. So the layout is pretty much the same throughout, which is nice. Traditional stick. Stick again. So then we also this is bass board run and this is board run, board run high stick. But that the um, it's cool that the layout is uh, pretty much the same throughout with these percussion instruments. not really sure whether you can uh, get these MIDI files that are on the keys uh, if you can get these into well let's check this out um, would be interesting to get these files into the DAW um, so I just need to look up where I actually have put the library and I guess that was hmm <laughs> Good question. Uh, References, libraries. Okay, drive E uh, I. Sorry. <coughs> so let's go there. Best service. Celtic era. So layers, image files, documentation. So it doesn't look like you can import these MIDI files into. So there might be a suggestion of an update to get these. Uh, I know that these are MIDI files uh, to be able to uh, drag and drop them into your DAW. At least I know that uh, Eduardo did that with Forest Kingdom uh, because I did some of these MIDI files myself for the release <laughs> back then. Uh, so that might come in handy to, to have these available. Um, but they aren't right now. Then what else do we have? We haven't touched the strings yet. So there is a acoustic guitar and Eduardo has posted a demo uh, with just the guitar and some reverb which is otherworldly it sounds amazing <laughs> especially when you add this arm noise button here
that's a pretty nice sound there. Um, you got some uh, various articulation triggers down here, which is um, legato, slide up, slide down. natural harmonics harmonic chords sound is uh, pretty cool triplet sound uh, and I think pretty much the same you get for uh, not fingered guitar but a uh, plucked so kind of played with a plectrum I guess a nice sound there for both guitars the uh, fingered and the plucked one uh, then we have strummed uh, so let's check this out for a short moment um. so various drumming patterns trying to figure out what uh, it seems like these change the course so this is obviously the 12 different uh, notes uh, C to B uh, then you get mm, open oh okay it's shown there open chord no action major minor and seventh okay gotcha So open core pretty much is fifth, I guess. That takes you pretty far with all 12 uh, notes sampled for the chords for major, minor, seventh and open. Uh, that And uh, this is 12, uh, 15, 16 different drumming patterns. This can work in a broad variety of ways uh, with um, not even Celtic music or necessarily this type of music, but overall because these guitars sound pretty cool and pretty great recorded. So, and there you have a different set of patterns and the same goes for, for uh, three quarter bar. Eighth notes, you get jigs, guitar reels. Let's check these out. So this is really some great stuff. Uh, this is something that I've been missing in, in regular guitar libraries that you can emulate this kind of sound. Uh, so 
Thumbs up for that. This is great. There's a broad variety of strum guitar sounds uh, that can take you very, very far. Um, let's check the Celtic harp. Okay, sometimes there's strange noise when you switch the instruments. It's, it's kind of, it's funny with uh, Eduardo's libraries, uh, it's such a gorgeous sound and uh, I think to myself, yeah, yeah, sounds, sounds great, as, as usual, you don't expect anything else from the Eduardo Tarionti library, you know that it sounds amazing right out of the box and um, props and hats off to the man, uh, I love the way he samples things and, and brings soul to the samples. Um, next in line is a uh, fiddle. There still is not a decent fiddle library out there for uh, fiddling type of music. Um, so. of different fiddle rhythms um, let's check rhythm three very nice and then we have the single instrument Have you ever played with audio modeling solo strings? The violin is quite good. No, actually I don't have any stuff of the audio modeling stuff for the strings, uh, so I can't say anything about it. Don't have these. Uh, but the fiddle is pretty Celtic-y, Celtic-ish. I guess that can take you pretty far, especially uh, when it's not buried, but uh, sitting in the mix. <laughs> Again, this kind of strange noise when you switch the instruments and play while it loads the other one. And 
keep in mind that uh, I turned this instrument down 10 dB already and it's still kind of some of the instruments are pretty loud still. Uh, <laughs> cool uh nice twangy sound there for bazooki and we got a tenor banjo Okay, there's uh, the last note on G of the range. Uh, we have checked, uh, what we haven't checked yet is uh, the ancient instruments. So it's like war horns and stuff like that. It's also great for sound design if you take these, do a little bit of distortion on top, and you got some pretty hefty Brahms. So Carnix uh, call called low. Let's check these out. Low calls. Uh, question: Can you edit the reverb on those? Yeah, everything is. Uh, you can switch off the reverb. So they are pretty dry. So if this isn't. Uh, predestined to be mel uh, molded into a Brahm sound. I don't know what it is. Yes. That's a great sound there. Um, then we have Kornu. Whatever that is. Uh, let's check it out. Cornu, uh, cornum was an ancient Roman brass instrument about three meter long and the shape of the letter G. The instrument was braced by a crossbar that stiffened the structure and provided a means of supporting its weight on the player's shoulder. So that weigh a bit. <laughs> And it seems like mm. 
Not sure whether vibrato is really controllable. Vibrato speed. Yeah, a little bit. Staccato speed, marcato speed, and the release sound. I didn't expect that. That might really work right underneath the traditional brass section as an add-on with a just a different bit of a sound. Uh, big horn calls. <laughs> kind of uh, imagining like uh, a herd of cows and <laughs> Having this sound in the background, somehow like nature documentary or something like that. It's definitely great stuff to do uh, a lot of different stuff that's not necessarily only Celtic related with it. Blackhorn cults. <laughs> Nice, nice stuff. And last but not least, one of my favorite things in every new Eduardo library is the soundscapes. So let's check these out. What I love about the soundscapes is usually you have three to four different sources and you can adjust them over time, bring in the belts, for example, take them out. Uh, so you can really make evolving soundscape over time uh, easily. For example, here we have four soundscapes. Instant Diablo. Start a whole queue with just an arpeggio with this patch, it's amazing. Try to jump through a little bit faster. Mm. 
I'm going to take this patch and uh, create a full uh, meditation relaxation album with it, just playing this patch for an hour. <laughs> I don't want to discredit anyone who's doing meditation music and things like that because there's way more to it than just playing a single great patch, but um, it can get you pretty far. So, um, there's a lot of more wins. Uh, I don't want to go through every single one of these. I don't want to spoil your experience when you actually go buy it and check out the sounds yourself. So, So whispers are a bit loud for me, for my taste. got some taste in terms of creating patches that really take you into another world. It's just amazing. like half an hour delay after the note so um, yeah you can switch the delay on and off one two three four okay that's pretty much a long delay time there like you can grab a coffee in between before the next delay hit notes uh, note hits Land of Gods. I can see already so many uses combining this with uh, with um, vocal codecs with a uh, uh, Keltia voices from um, uh, from from Era and with um, Shavanai, his library for uh, Celtic solo vocals. This is a great, great little lie. Uh, it's not little, there's a lot of stuff to it. And um, what I'm going to do is um, just, uh, I guess, play a demo of the library, uh, one of the tracks that Eduardo, uh, Eduardo did, for example, the guitar track that was um, pretty awesome uh, while I go grab a new coffee and then we jump straight in and we'll um, see if we can come up with the track for it uh, so I'm just looking where the solo fingered guitar there we go I hope the sound is transmitted See, 
Yesus. Well, exactly in time to grab my coffee. There we go. Um, so, what are we going to do today? Um, start working, I guess, and see if we can come up with the track. From looking through the instrument, there were a few that immediately strike some... Um, uh, yeah, let's say inspiration. And one of these was the acoustic guitar strum patterns. So I would suggest let's start with these today. Uh, so cheers everybody who's watching. Welcome to part two of the first hands on to uh, Celtic era. And now we are trying to create some music with it um so this is strum guitar 16 la 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 la, la. Dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Let's see, tempo 80. Okay, um, I'm not really sure whether I'm starting with a guitar. Maybe we'll bring that in later. Um, and let's start with a Celtic harp. kind of a little D minor 
Celtic-ish thing. Um, sounds like 140 or something. Try this. What did I play? Damn it. Did you move? Yes, I did. Greetings from sunny California. So. Thanks to my new RME audio interface, uh, we are now uh, having less hassle and issues with uh, latency and all that good stuff. So, start really with some uh, with a melody that we have going on there so let's kind of Try this. Not too shabby there. to start a little bit earlier. Let's get rid of this first one. Five or something like that. Mm. 
that sounds pretty awesome to be honest um so i th see if i can double that with a fiddle just to give it more um interest So the question was here, uh, someone asked uh, why Cubase over Ableton or Pro Tools. Um, and pretty much the answer is MIDI. So uh, meanwhile, when I do sound mangling and all these uh, kind of hybrid trailer sound elements and things like that, I more and more tend to use Ableton for its capability in terms of treating audio. And... Ruben, hey, nice to see you. <laughs> and uh, but for for everything that relies on MIDI data and mangling MIDI, still Cubase is my number one go-to. I think it's it's the age-old war Cubase or Logic. If you're a Mac or PC, um, I'm on a PC, so Logic is no option anyway. And um, I've been growing up with Cubase pretty much, and. Uh, that's my DAW of choice. But you can do so much stuff in pretty much any other DAW, like Ableton or uh, Reason or, you know, there's so much stuff out there. And it's just, it's not really, I mean, for, for Carpenter, uh, it doesn't matter which hammer he uses, at least as he know how to use a hammer. And I think it's pretty much the same with the DAW. It's tool and you need to learn how to utilize this tool to get your thoughts across. So... So, let's double the melody there with a the fiddle. Difference here is that I forgot to so intentionally didn't quantize this uh, little ornament there. I wanted to have that a little bit more lively. So let's put the fiddle a little bit to the right and the flute a little bit to the left. Introduce a little bit of percussion. Let's start with. Yeah, let's use the board run traditional stick.
Eighth notes. And just ran a note there. Just the release time of the harp a little bit. It seems a little bit very long. to repeat this part and I need some low end information so I'm not really sure where I get that from so uh, I won't necessarily uh, limit myself to using Celtic era only but for the most part I try at least and uh, we we'll see how far that gets us but since I want to utilize some kind of bass instrument it might be that we're not coming very far here because I didn't spot any real bass oriented instruments there my wife is just waving me from the balcony <laughs> great um, so There's a strum buzuki as well, which seems to be cool. Uh, we checked the acoustic strum patterns, and I hope the buzuki are kind of the same extensive um, uh, sampling as in the guitar, and it looks like. So this is pretty cool. We hopefully utilize that a little bit later. Um, so what did I say? Let's use some kind of bass instrument here. And uh, to make a long story short, I just add um trillion here so bass actually my flute should be blue so and turn the volume down on this guy as well I guess we try just a kind of acoustic bass. Let's try this. That was pretty simple, but it kind of did what I wanted to do. Uh, hit some bloops in there, blue notes. <laughs> so hard quantize the first one, so let's check this out. <laughs>
Okay, should be in now. Okay, let's see if we can do like a, a pedal note uh, from from the bouzouki, for example. Uh, so, why did I actually copy the harp here? Uh, let's utilize the bouzoukis drummed. Uh, let's use the eighth as drums. Just need to find out what is really what matches the tone. to figure out whether it triggers directly on the note or if there is a delay. So this is in D and we want the open version. second run only and make it way quieter and also a little bit of a low cut there like very steep uh, don't need all that low end just want some high rhythm information there say
So. But it's still not the right instrument. It's too busy with the 16th notes there. So let's try some other ones. We try. Um, let's try the Suzuki Reels. How do these sound? Okay, I think we stick to the eighth notes version here. Everything else is too busy. Just randomly trying different pattern here. So that sounds good. sensitive Let me change the patterns here again so there's a miss uh, concept in between the bod run and the Either the buzuki is too early or the bot run is too late. Yeah, the bot run was way out of time. hearing like a little melody in my hair that we can one to the background with uh, the expression data. I 
melodies on their own. Let's move trillion up there. Okay, let's rather double uh, the same melody here. line here so um One more percussion layer here. So let's go. I think I'm taking something else here from. Hmm. Either error. Yeah, what happened? 
happened there. Listen to the whole thing and then we do a second part for it. Drums. Mm, this is I'm just going to do. So...
sorry for that. Um, so, and maybe, just maybe, I should hit the save button in between. <laughs> just to be sure. Um, so I want some kind of um, little... metal percussion symbol kind of thing. So we can now Okay, that was a little bit early this twice
my experience with Engine for Mac. I just don't know, but it doesn't seem to run smooth as in the stream. Um, I know that in the past there have been issues with uh, Engine and Mac. Uh, I right now got uh, the absolutely latest Engine version from the best service support. Uh, so right now this is... Mm -hmm. Engine, engine preferences, miscellaneous version 2.5.0.163. So, this is the latest version that I have because there have been some issues with engine as well when you kind of change any type of hardware or anything that you needed to uh, re. Uh, register the libraries uh, and and generate a new key every time you change something in the hardware or even after a windows update and uh un and according to to the best service support this has been fixed now in this version of engine and um maybe just give it a try if it runs smoother on mac since i am not on a mac i can't say anything about it so uh yeah just give it a shot um okay going on here just doing a little bit of quantization I think we can safely introduce uh, the, the guitar now or guitar drums these a little bit to the right so that when we bring in the buzuki it doesn't interfere and gets in the way of the guitar so let's lose the eighth notes as well and get rid of the settings we had here so just to Okay, um, so we'll find something that works. So first of all, we have um, the B, and we go down to G, then we go to D minor, and then we go to A minor. So the B is a major, the G is a major, the D is a minor, and the A is a minor as well. But we are switching to the open chord here, open fifth. And so now I'm just trying various rhythms. Just random now, see what it sounds like. Too shabby. Uh, we can copy the same to the buzuki and just change the rhythms here using other ones. And now. That's cool.
that. Going a little bit more legato. where that's going. So, 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 so. Dum, ba, dum, ba, dum, ba, dum, ba, dum. I think I'm doubling the buzuki in the fiddle here. sounds shit and um, let's just copy that over I'll do a little bit so I think that should work fine duplicate that because uh, this guy is going to be from the left.
so that one is way way softer um, so we're nearing completion there this guy and open up a little bit of shimmer and shake fair enough if anybody can explain to me why contact keeps open with that wide window, I'd appreciate any help. I have no idea why that is. second Just some final notes there. <clears throat> Let's 
So, let's do a click. So, and uh, last but not least, we're just adding a little bit of a soundscape um, for the intro and the ending to get a little bit of a feel for it. So, why do we have Kelly era soundscapes? Um, So we might just for the last part introduce uh, a little bit of vocal from uh, era vocal codex. that goes Now let's try this one, just for the last part.
like that. I think that doesn't sound too bad. So I have a bunch of channels here. Um, I'm not going to subgroup these or anything like that. Um, actually, let's move this guy down. Um, That may take a second. So I'm going with a knee for all the channels. Uh, that's fine. I'm going to use <coughs> the bus, give it a little bit of drive. And send it through. <coughs> Sorry, uh, through the VBC rack. And last but not least, we have a little bit of limiting going on. So let's see how that sounds all together with not much mixing work in there. So let's find a roll. Uh, we can push it a little more, like minus four, say, to to uh, get the integrated uh, measuring a little bit more towards 
minus 13, minus 12, say, something like that. So when um, we're getting to the loudest part. to not over compress it um, as you can already hear with my voice that's running through the same master channel and it sounds a little bit compressed now um, anyway uh, that's it for today first stream from the west coast enjoy your evening in Europe enjoy your day in the States and enjoy your morning in Asia or wherever you are um, I hope that I can return to do these streams regularly at least once a week uh, i will keep you updated on the cwvi facebook page which the actual day is it might not necessarily be thursday morning um, but uh, i try to do them uh, more regularly now that i'm uh, back in in shape to work so to say uh, so let me just push that back a little bit um, yeah thanks for watching uh, head over to the best service website and buy this library if you into Celtic medieval uh, music or like any of the instruments that we show today it is not necessarily only uh, geared towards Celtic music I mean that's the main focus but you can utilize a lot of the instruments in other circumstances as well um, so here's a little track we did today uh, with Celtic Era, Eduardo Tarilanti. And where we go? Sorry. Enjoy. <laughs> 